Hello there, world of the future. For me, it's currently 11, 11 p.m. right now on Saturday, March 12th, and my wishes are all about to come true because I'm gonna be listening to Pink Floyd's Animals album for the very first time, and I wanna establish that the way we'll be listening to Pink Floyd on this channel from here on out is we're gonna listen to the entire album all the way through and then listen back to the album again a little more analytically, break things down the second time around. But the first time around is a pure solid listen. So let's get into it. If you didn't care,
That's it. How does Pink Floyd keep managing to do this to me? I feel like they keep transporting me far away and I can't find the ground again once the music is over. It's just so, so beautiful. I'm left in shock and awe and love. It was love at first listen. Animals was everything I hoped it would be and way, way more. So beautiful. I love how in the really prolonged moments of um, voiceless musicality of just all these instrumentations, all these instrumental lines, how it feels like, like we're floating, we're drifting. They can incorporate similar approaches and tweak one element ever so slightly, even if it's just in the tempo or in the dynamics or in, in some sort of rhythmic play, a little beat that's added in there, a, a certain uh, device that's put on top of an instrument or adding in another instrument, just any little change that they make can completely change the feeling that they evoke and they can draw all these emotions out of us so amazing and the way that they used the figurative language in this one and all the imagery so creative so unique i've become the biggest pink floyd fan truly the, I, I just love what they do now we're going to dive a little bit deeper and take a look at a few things starting with track number one pigs on the wing part one what happened to me so even though this is the calm before the storm, we have a very laid back, bare, acoustic moment, they still feed us that Pink Floyd flair that we love. It's simple, but there's still so much depth and melancholy trapped into the sound. That was a nice suspension and release. That was a really interesting moment right there and perfectly placed right there at the tail end of this opening track. It felt like we had this build up, but it's also in a minor. So it's like this tension building spot. And, 
and we are blasted away into the world of the animals album. Moving right along to track two, we've got dogs, which I think brings about a whole new life to the whole dog eat dog world concept. This intro acts as the perfect immersion into the world of this song. We have an acoustic guitar that acts as our escort into this song, but it's not 100% steady, at least not in the dynamics, right? It starts off at this very soft pianissimo, then it grows louder and louder and closer and closer into view until it's a little more prominent, but then it's really interesting and exciting how it clashes up against the more electric sound, which is a little more flashing in and out of view as opposed to steadily growing, but they both grow in their own way. And once they've both gotten to their peaks, they've propelled us into this world. That chord right there is just really interesting. It gives us this new device, this new bite. That was the perfect peak or explosive moment right when the last lyric was sung. And taking a look at the lyrics, they're a little bit dark, but it does highlight the point that we talked about earlier of the whole dog eat dog world concept, right? It's a little bit about um, having to step on a few backs to get ahead, which I guess is associated metaphorically with dogs when we talk about people like that. Something I really appreciate about this section is the way that the organ shines through and the way that the notes pierce through the sound as these lyrics are being sung because it feels like it takes on the character of the knife or of the aggressive demeanor. And of course, to top off that essence of this really big, bold power, we have this striking electric guitar. So my interpretation on these longer periods of instrumentation without any vocals is that they give us time to really ruminate on the imagery that they just displayed for us. We can see the whole scene play out. We can see what they're talking about. I get the sense that they're saying a lot even when they're not saying anything at all. Right here, for example, we had a complete rhythmic change. We have this heaviness, the beat is a little bit drawn out and it's, it's, it feels like we're, we're sinking in our seats a little bit at this moment and we're sent on a completely different path and it's completely obvious that this is a new part. then we have our moments where it feels like we've reached a peak which to me feels like some sort of achievement or like moments in life where you've accomplished something oh. There we have this beautiful symbiotic relationship going on with our drumming and that electric guitar it's so so emotional. I love that echoey afterthought effect that was placed there on the vocal, it almost makes it feel like that reverb acts as harmonies and backgrounds.
So they use that really cool echoey effect to keep the vocals going on a looped repeat as the instrumentation keeps seeking out new life. It keeps keeps moving, keeps moving forward. And then we have that, um, that echoey voice acting as this like rotation or revolution to keep some consistency along with the bass guitar. Scary times. What a perfect grand ending and we're just at the second track but something that just occurred to me was that maybe there were so many different faces to this song and maybe it kept switching up because that is the nature of dogs they do have many sides to them and there are so many different types of dog and every type of dog is different and even within one breed one dog to the next can have completely varying personalities so maybe that was kind of put into play a little bit i feel like with pink floyd nothing's off the table nothing's off limits starting up side number two we've got pigs parentheses three different ones <laughs> I love that motif so much. It just melts me and it has its hooks in me. It's so minor and gripping. I think that's what it is. That motif really created this gorgeous bed for the rest of the instrumentation to just sit on top of it and thrive. Like everything else that's added in just sounds brilliant because of it. <laughs> Decided to feed us a little, a this little drop of some candy, just a, just a little pinch with that higher motif up there in the higher pitches and the way that it just all works together. It's just, they've set themselves up so they can do no wrong in this song already. <laughs> You know what? It's not even funny how in love with the vocals I am of this album. They're just so, so good. There's this really strong delivery, but it's also really restrained at the same time so that that play with duality is so good. The way that they just paint a picture and the way that everything is pronounced so gorgeous. And I love seeing it in this moment right here in this minor light and the way that it sits on top of this bed of instrumentation is just this perfect moment. I, I don't want to choose favorites, but I can't help but really, really be in love with this track right here. There's this underlying Benny and the Jets essence I'm picking up on with this one. That part right there is very Wild West to me. beloved motif rises from the ashes once again. <laughs> If you follow the bass line right there, it takes you on this really emotional journey. You can feel it walking and you can feel it with every movement. You can, you can feel yourself transporting with the music. Something I find really interesting 
tailing off of that song is that it feels as though the rate or the speed at which the decrescendo happens for the the guitar is a little bit faster than for the percussion and the drums feels like the drums stand their ground a little bit longer like they, they do start trailing down it starts getting softer and softer and softer but slower number two on side two y más importantemente número cuatro del álbum entero tenemos cheap so the delayed echoed reverby effect on the keys kind of gives us this vibraphone feeling like the vibraphone sound comes in the echo not in the initial playing of the note when the note hits but in that little tail end the way it the way it hums love that moment right there that effect kind of feels like a magic trick like it feels like the sound is being pulled out of a hat <laughs> Listen, I simply cannot go further without acknowledging the brilliance in the supreme quality of the technique that went into that delivery. I mean, we had breath support, we had vocal control, perfect placement, all of them check, 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 and all without compromising on the integrity of the sound. <laughs> Another shout out, but this time for the drum work on this one. That downward chromatic dissonance adds to that whole moment that feels like we're drowning by a flood of minor. That was so cool because it feels like we have these effects, right, that happen and then we get a vocal shot out at the end and then sometimes the vocal warps itself into the effect and then sometimes the vocal is layered with the effect. So we have all these things going on and this constantly changing and evolving relationship between voice and effect. <laughs> Not unlike the intro, this outro had a bit of a different nature from the rest of the song, right? This time around, we have a little bit more of a playful moment. There was a light brightness that was brought around a little bit more sunny, a little more happy moment. And it felt like it was this life support that was thrown at us to help us from the drowning, dragging underworld that we had just been pulled into. So the thing about great music, like what Pink Floyd has graced us with, is that you can hear different things every time around. Every time you listen to it, you can interpret something in a new way, whether it's actual lyrics or just the way something sounds, the way a certain element plays with another. All right, so our fifth and final track of the night is Pigs on the Wing 2. But before we get to that, I want to thank you for sitting here with me and listening to this beautiful Animals album. I'm always blown away by everything Pink Floyd. They've quickly become one of my favorite bands of all time. I'm so glad we're doing this together. Thank you for guiding me. And let's just cross our fingers that YouTube and all the copyright regulations don't give me as much trouble as they did on the last video because <sighs> that, that, that took a lot out of me. Without any further ado, let's enjoy Pigs on the Wing part two. You know that I care, and I know that you care for me too. On the way to the storm, from pigs on the way. All right, take care of yourself. I love you guys, and remember to take it easy.